to that. <clears throat> Red leather, yellow leather. Buddy. Yes. Are you ready for America's favorite podcast segment, the free form exploratory uh, kind of a cosmic gumbo podcast segment, Funny Verses? Are you ready? Are you pumped? Are you amped? Are you jazzed? Are you psyched? Are you primed? Are you revved up? Are you prepped? Are you prepared? Have you trained? Are you going to be using 10% of your power? Are you ready, buddy? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay. I think so. Well, well, then, without any further ado, it's time once again for Bunny Versus. And now, here is your host, Bunny Williams. Take it away, Bunny! So, what horrible happened this, this week? Um, I know something. I can't think of what... Did, did Kyle get off this week? Yes. That, that was yes. this week? Yes. I think so. Yeah, that was that was pretty horrible. And then yeah. seeing him on Tucker, that that's just like how much worse can it get? I don't know. But yeah, so yeah, it, it's been fucking horrible. Um, Bunny. Yes. I want to talk a little bit about Macy's. Okay. Thanksgiving Day Parade. Yes, we do. Uh, on Bunny Versus. We also have to have to say a couple of words about last night in Soho. Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. Um, so last week, uh, including the last episode of the podcast, I saw three random uh, Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parades because I have learned that a shit ton of them are just there online, and so I've been watching. I watched old ones all week to pregame for Thanksgiving. Yeah. And so I saw three random ones. Last week for the podcast, we covered the 1984 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. And then I saw 2001 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. And I did that because I was like, uh, no, I saw the 1999 one. And yeah. it was all about... Oh, the future, of course, because it's right before, you know, uh, the, the millennium in Y2K and all of that. And then I said, that was interesting. It was interesting to see, you know, pre, you know, 1999. And then I thought, what other important Macy's can I see? And then I thought, oh, shit. If... So they did a Macy's parade in 2001? That that must have been weird because it was only a few weeks after nine yeah. eleven. Like, like how the fuck was that Macy's parade? I don't remember seeing it that year. So I saw the two thousand and one nine uh, pre post nine eleven Macy's parade, and Rudy Giuliani's there. They're putting his face and everything as as the hero of the day, yeah. and it's. So goddamn patriotic. Holy shit. Everything's about America and patriotism and flag and truck and America. Yeah. And, and then I also saw the 1994 parade. I said, hey, I, I was a senior in high school when that came out. I want to see that. And the crazy thing is, the four Macy's parades, each one had Joey Lawrence in it. <laughs> Fucking weird. We saw 84, and there's young Joey Lawrence from Give Me a Break with Nell Carter. And, um, hold on, I'll, I'll get to it. Avner the Eccentric. Okay. And then in 94, he's there promoting Blossom. Yeah. And then, like, in 2001, apparently he had some sort of a sitcom with his other two brothers. Like, the Lawrence brothers, they had a sitcom together, and he was promoting that. And, and it got to the point where it was like, you know, we're all awake to see the Macy's Parade in 2021, and it's like, shit, Joey Lawrence is going to pop up. Everyone's on Joey Lawrence watch. I don't know what, what he would be promoting. Maybe they're making money playing too. But fucking 
we all need to be on watch for fucking Joey Lawrence because yeah. I think he just has an open invite to these goddamn things. But that was weird. He just kept popping up. Yes. Popping up. And it scared the shit out of me. Yes, he did. Now, but now watching the parade these days, it's because, it, like, I am so out of fucking touch. Like, I, I have to assume that if you are on a float, you're famous. But I don't know who any of these fucking people are. Uh, last year, I was really excited because uh, a, a band I knew was on the Macy's Parade last year. AJR. They're three yeah. brothers, and they have a band, and their music is fucking wonderful. I have all of their albums, and I absolutely love their music. And they were on a float last year, and I, I was really happy about that. But this year, I don't know if I knew anyone. I, I found myself more judging the quality of their lip sync ability, My, which means I yeah. have to give a special uh, shout-out to they were either a J-pop or a K-pop girl band. Yes, yes. Okay, and they had the headsets and everything. They had the little microphone coming down in front of their face. Not even the barest attempt to lip sync. Yep. They just yep. did their dance moves. Their lips did not move out at all, and I was like, I, I. Anarchy! Anarchy! I loved my it. Fav I loved it. My, my favorite part of Macy's Parade performances is the float parks, and then they start lip-syncing, but near the end, they will still be lip-syncing as the float moves, and no one warns them. So they're there lip-syncing the song, and then suddenly they just get jerked like, Oh! Yeah. For one second as the car starts moving again, and I, we all were looking for that, and it was so much fun. I was really proud because this was one of the first parades in a long time where we all saw it. Yeah. And of course, the kids and I were watching it, but then also, like, Natasha was, was, was here and watching it with us, and... And Mal, you know, they're 16 years old. And they said, you know, they, they texted me at like 1 a.m. They're like, wake me up in time for the parade. And it's like, okay, that's not going to happen. And I woke them up. And sure enough, they were just wide awake, ready to watch the Macy's parade. And they were psyched about it. And that meant a lot to me. So we all watched it together. We just can't watch the dog show afterwards. We just don't care about the dog show. For a lot of people, their routine is watching the Macy's Parade, watching the dog show, and then yeah. watching football. But I just don't care for that damn dog show. I just do not. I thought you used to be a fan. I will watch it for a little bit, for like a five minutes or so. I, I was excited about the dog show when I learned that it was created based on Best in Show. Yeah. That was, that was like part of when we... Uh, Fred, the summer of Fred Willard, where we discussed that. Well, as as usual, it, it the dog show was never a part of my New York tradition, and I have everything on on digital for that. So I watched the parade. Yeah. Went over to March of the Wooden Soldiers, King Kong, Mighty Joe Young. Mighty Joe Young. Mm hmm. So, and then you don't watch King Kong Lives with Linda Hamilton? No. What? Ain't Shocking. King Kong and then uh, Girlfriend Kong and then they're Kong babies. <laughs> yeah. That's King Kong Lives. But, but, but that girl band, I have got to say, again, I, I was totally impressed. Like, there's only so rebellious you can get when you're on a giant moving strawberry shortcake with people in animal costumes dancing around you. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it's very hard to, like, really stick it to the man in that moment. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Them refusing to lip sync, I, I, I appreciate the effort. Yeah, like nice try. Yes, nice but, try. Yeah, and, and, and I always get excited to see what uh, Broadway, you know, shows they'll be doing. And I was excited. I didn't know any of the Broadway shows that they were doing. I, yeah. I wasn't aware of any of them. And one of them, you know, caught everyone's attention. And it was a, it was a play called Six. And it had these six women. And they were a girl group. And, and the performance was really good. And I was like, what the hell musical is Six? And I look it up on Wikipedia. And I'm like, wait a second. So... This is a rock musical about a girl group, but each girl is the ghost of a wife of Henry the Eighth. And okay. the musical and the musical are these women telling their stories of like, hey, I survived. Hey, I was killed. Hey, I was beheaded. Hey, uh, I was cheated on and ran away. Hey, I was assassinated. And it's a girl band filled with ghosts of the wives of Henry VIII telling their story to the audience in the form of a pop girl group. I find this shit fascinating. <laughs> and now I, I like, like, yeah, I, I've, I listened to the soundtrack a little bit this week because of the performance on the Macy's Parade. So, so yeah, the musical is just called Six. So it's something to, to check out. I think that's awesome. So I've had some things running through my mind a bit lately. Okay. That I just kind of want to kick around. Okay. Hit Basically me with it. all church related. Okay. Church related? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Okay, so, like, it's nice that we said on the podcast that we like, I woke up early the day I died. Yes. Okay, but I think this should be something more from the church to make it a bit more official and to, to recognize things that we find that are Woodian or people that have performed a service of some sort, where they would not necessarily be a saint for it, but they are recognized somehow with a title or something like that. Okay. Okay. And we could do press releases and send it out to Variety and shit like that. And if they want to pick it up, great. If they don't, who gives a fuck? Yeah. But we have made an official statement on this, that, or the other thing. And maybe we pick out five things a year. Okay. And maybe on the anniversary of the church, we release that as a press release. This year, the Church of Ed Wood recognizes this, this, whatever. Kind of rock and roll hall of fame. Uh, one of the first people that I would like to recognize in the year twenty, the year of our Lord Ed Wood, twenty twenty one, is Nathan Williams, the man who uh, kept the Rocky Horror streak alive in yeah, Oregon. Exactly. Exactly. That might have even have been what started my hip thought down that road. Right. Yeah. He deserves kind of some kind of recognition for that. That is a completely Woodian thing to do. Does yeah. it deserve sainthood? Probably not. Yeah. But something else that says, you know, like Billy Zane. Does Billy Zane deserve sainthood? Maybe a case could be put up for that. You know, but... Nathan, not so much, but he should still be recognized. Yeah. You know who deserves uh, 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 more recognition? 
Fred Olin Ray. Fred who? Fred Olin Ray. I'm not placing him. Uh, he did a few... He's done a few movies. Uh, the Brain Leeches, Alien Dead, Prison Ship, Icon, Beverly Hills Vamp, Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers, uh, Wizards of the Demon Sword, Scream Queen, Hot Tub Party, Evil Tunes, Dinosaur Island, Attack of the 60-Foot Centerfold, like so many, Invisible Mom, uh, Bikini Frankenstein. He He's... He's like a modern day grindhouse director. Yeah. Bikini <coughs> Airwaves, Bikini Cave Girl, Bikini Chain Gang, The Bikini Escort Company, Bikini Go Go, Bikini Pirates. Oh man, these are all actual films. Bikini Frankenstein, what? Bikini Jones and the Temple of Eros? That sounds horrible. How come I haven't seen it? Mm-hmm. But when he's not making these like uh, uh, grindhouse movies, he he's doing like Hallmark Channel movies. So he's doing like a uh, Hollywood Chainsaw Bikini Massacre, and then 2015's A Prince for Christmas. <laughs> you know. So, like, I know Fred Olin Ray because uh, Fred Olin Ray filmed, uh, he teamed up with Ed Wood shortly before he died, and it's like, hey, Ed, you're a legend. Maybe we can make a movie together. But they didn't have backers, so they filmed some test footage and shopped it around in the hopes that people would like the test footage and, and give them money to make the actual movie, and it never went anywhere. But parts of it are shown in the documentary Ed Wood, uh, Look Back in Angora. Mm-hmm. And it's like a surf guy with a surfboard, and he's trying to yes, save his yes, girlfriend yes, 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 from yes. aliens, and the aliens think surfboard is a weapon. Is that thing lit? Just you wait and find out. Because he's an Australian surfer? Yeah. I, that was I don't think that ever got finished. No, it never got finished. It was just like test footage to try and get a movie done. But, yeah. like, that's Fred Olin Ray. He was trying to get Edward work, like, right up to, his, to the point of his death. And, like, good for Fred Olin Ray. I was looking for Christmas movies, and I was, I, was go- I was going through all of these, like, maybe we could do a shitty Lifetime or a shitty Hallmark or all of those shitty Christmas movies that are being cranked out. Like, Chris, yeah. it, cable Christmas movies are the new grindhouse. Yes. So I was thinking maybe we could do one of these for Christmas, and I was surprised at how many of them had the name Fred Olin Ray attached to them. I'm like, shit, get work where you can, motherfucker. You're getting, you're getting the job done. Well, we are we're once again coming up to our annual review of Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny. Yes. I think that movie, just for that, that movie deserves church recognition. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know. Pirate and world. Nothing, nothing. I'm just going to put the little seed in the back of your head. Because this one is, like, totally on you. But letting people know that the Pope of the Church of Ed Wood is gender fluid might that help would some be. people. Yeah, that would be something. I will never say anything about that again. That is completely your call. For the longest time, my sexuality and my gender and all of that, like, I'm Gen X. And so I always felt that, like, you know, my sexuality is my base, and I don't have to tell it to anyone but now I feel that I'm in a position where I should tell people that, hey, I was born a man. I like being a woman. I'm trying to be a woman. And, and I'm being out and in the open. And I'm, it, it, I've gotten to a comfort with my 
a newfound gender where it, my wife says, hey, you want to go to the store? We need to pick up this. And I said, sure, let me get dressed. And I get dressed as a woman, and I'm comfortable going out now. Yeah. And I, I am, for a while, I, you know, I, I, it was a process throughout the year where it's like, hey, I'm going to dress up as a woman every once in a while. Hey, I'm going to get dressed in drag, and then we can smoke together. Oh, we're, you're going to have a drink? Cool, make me a drink. I'm going to go get in drag. And it, it was a slow process towards, like, I'm feeling like a woman today. And now it's just, it, for the longest time, I was like, oh, I'm gender fluid. I'm, sometimes I'm a guy, sometimes I'm a girl. But now I, I feel like even today, where I'm just in my shirt, I haven't done my hair, I don't have makeup on, I haven't shaved. I'm still, I'm just a woman, and I'm, I'm just living as a woman right now. I'm not always presenting as a woman, but I'm, I'm like she, her all the time now. And yeah, then someone yeah. on Twitter said, uh, hey, you well, know, I, is, I post- since you brought that up, is that what your pronouns should be now? No. Okay. Because uh, I am a woman, but then it's like, okay. Let me, I'm going to do a story time, and what, I, what I'm trying to do is, here's a story time as a woman, and here's a story time as Mr. Steve, because Mr. Steve is a person, Mr. Steve is a character, and kids like Mr. Steve, and I want to do story times as a woman, but also not lose Mr. Steve, because kids love Mr. Steve, and so I see Mr. Steve as a character, and I'm basically the woman all the time. I can still become Mr. Steve because people like Mr. Steve. And it, I feel that Reverend Steve is the same way, is that I am a woman all the time except for when we record the podcast and I'm, Miss, and I'm Reverend Steve. And so right now, yeah, I, I'm he, him. I'm Reverend Steve. That is a character just like Mr. Steve. And these are all parts of me. Someone said, like, I, I, would, I dress up to go to the movies. Now, every time I go to the movies, I go to the movies as a woman, and I'm comfortable with that. And someone said, hey, looking good, Reverend. And then they tweeted back, May Lynn, sorry, I fucked up. I'm, I'm so sorry. And it's like, no, it's okay. You know, I'm Mr. Steve. I'm Reverend Steve. I'm May Lynn. And, all, and I'm all of those things at once. And so I, I am trying to live my life as a woman. You call me he... I'm not going to give you shit. <laughs> I've spent the last 43 years being a guy. I'm not going to give you shit over some pronouns. You still call me Steve. Yeah, that's fucking fine. Yeah, but still, what do you prefer? I mean, that's. I, I mean, I appreciate what you're saying, but if you have a preference. Oh, I. Uh, I and you can I be prefer, whoever the hell you want on the podcast. You know I, that. I prefer May Lynn. I prefer she, her, but also I, I feel that pronouns aren't the key to everything. I feel that a lot of people really sweat the pronouns, and I'm just not that person, you know? They're just pronouns. Yeah. So, do they even have a Schoolhouse Rock song for pronouns? For pronouns? Yeah. Rufus is in your sack, gorilla. Says I got pronouns. Okay, that is a pretty good song, but <laughs> yeah, I don't sweat the pronouns, so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm still, I'm still Reverend Steve. I'm still Mister Steve, and I'm May Lynn, and I'm all of those things at once. I'm, I'm the Holy Trinity. <laughs> right there now. you go. So I'm happy with that. How are you doing, Bunny? I am good. I am good. But I, I always thought that that the church should have an appeal to transgender people because, like... Oh, yeah, that's what I was saying. your I, own I, individual <laughs> and unique self, your yeah. own genuine self, I mean, that's what the church of Edward is about. Yeah, I, I I'm a little bit high. That that's what I now I remember what I was saying. Uh, for the longest time, I was really uh, secretive about my my sexuality, my gender, my yada yada yada. But now I feel that I should be out to for all of the people that can't. 
yeah. a lot of people have been getting a hold of me and they're like, hey, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud that you're out there and, and you know, you're, you're being who you really are. I can't, but, you know, I've been getting a lot of those messages, a lot of people coming from the word work to talk to me. And, yeah. and everyone has the story. And I've heard from a lot of people who want to dress up and want to be a woman and have a woman inside them but can't live that life, feel that they cannot. And it's like, okay, this is why I'm dressing up. Because I can be out here and I can be out for all of those people who can't, you know? Yeah. If I can do it in a small town in Oklahoma, maybe that will give courage to those people who live in L.A. and want to go out, you know? Yeah. Shit, I'd be going to work as a woman if I still worked at the bookstore. You know? So... I can have courage to help those who don't have courage. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. But that's all some things to consider. And I wanted to bring it up. Thank you. Thank you for bringing it up. It is something to think about. Because anybody can send a press release. Yeah. Doesn't make a difference. Doesn't mean that they're going to pick up a story but you know we did this we here are our yearly announcements maybe a puff of white smoke nice you know yeah and we send out a press release yeah that's a good idea i like that it's tough being a church that really doesn't like calling attention to itself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <sighs> so that was the one thing. Other than that, uh, pretty good. The second episode of Dabney is in the can. Nice. And I'm working on the third, and I finally got the puppet tool in the Anablox going so yeah. i got really excited about that because that's kind of a level up but it won't show yet because i didn't animate a whole hell of a lot yeah i just used this new technique and it looks pretty good but like the intro to episode three is not going to be highly animated <laughs> so i i i can i don't feel high but then I keep staring at the background of our video and the lights just keep changing intensity and I just keep staring at them and staring at them yeah. and then I realize that I'm high. But those lights are beautiful, Bunny. It's so subtle because it's, it, it's so almost subtle. a still picture. Yeah. Except for those lights. I love it. I absolutely love it. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. What does your shirt say? Uh, busy doing nothing. Okay. Cool. There we go. Yeah. Mine says chaos coordinator. <laughs> nice. So that's it for that. <laughs> uh, that's coming along nicely. It's not great animation yet or anything like that although I do think the show itself is funny as fuck yeah I think I came up with some good bits of this show good but so that's it for that uh what else is there like you know as soon as we get to the next segment then I'll remember all the stuff for this segment yeah. Like, fuck, That's how it's... Last Night in Soho. That oh, was, yes. That was Last an Night in interesting Soho. interesting movie. Huh? There, it, it, there were some turns in that film that I generally did not... I, I've seen pretty much every horror movie that got a wide release this year, and I can honestly say that Last Night in Soho scared me more than any of those horror movies. Yeah. And Last Night in Soho isn't even a horror movie. But there are parts of that that genuinely frightened me. Like what? Uh, 
Like uh, Anya Taylor-Joy, most people know her as Queen's Gambit, but I know her as New Mutant. Because she was in the New Mutant, oh, the movie was, that God... Oh, yeah? Yeah, the movie that God didn't want to come out. It got postponed like 35,000 times. We did an entire shaft just on how much this movie kept getting fucked over. Yeah. And so it, it, New Mutant's slow descent into like prostitution and like drug use and whatever and and how the woman kept getting haunted by like the johns the customers yeah and and then that woman slow descent into madness because of all the ghosts that she has to face like there were some parts there that literally like like edge of your seat fear like actual fear i i no, I, I didn't feel that. I didn't. I didn't get a horror feeling off of the movie. I, I took it as more of a noir, you know, more of a, a, a mystery thriller. You, you might. Know, you... I didn't really find horror in it. Yeah. You. You even, might like. Even if it did have zombies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I love it. Diana Rigg. That did not look like Diana Rigg. Now I, I, I had no I idea heard it was Diana her. Diana Rigg was in it. I was really excited to see Diana Rigg, and I was watching the movie, and I was like, "That does not look like Diana Rigg." But that's got oh. to be Diana Rigg. There's nobody else in this movie who could be played by Diana Rigg. Yeah. And I actually had to look it up on IMDb. Yes, that yes, was same her. here, same here. I didn't even know Diana Rigg was in this movie. I looked. I, I'm like, who is this old woman in this movie? Let me look it up really quick on IMDb. No shit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Then yeah, I, think I, 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 I heard some lead up running up to the movie, and it was Edgar Wright, so I was interested. I I I, I would not. It's not going to be as rewatchable as Baby Driver is. Yeah. The soundtrack is really good, though. And especially... Yeah, right? Especially since... I really liked... I really liked those two or three songs that were from the 80s, but they re-recorded them to sound like they were songs that came from the 60s. There were two or three songs like that. Yeah. The time element, Edgar Wright did a really, really interesting job playing around with the time element. Because starting the movie with, what was her name, Ellie? Emmy? I think so. Something like that. Yeah. Like, it starts off... She's like a farm girl in Cornwall or some shit. And it already looks like the 60s. Yeah. She looks like she's the 60s. And I swear, this had, this had the exact same opening as Rock of Ages. She got to London. I, I was expecting her albums to get <laughs> stolen. Yeah. <laughs> Wolfgang von Colt. Yeah. So it got kind of weird to find out that no, that was actual, actually modern times. Yeah. Because even her costuming and everything, she looked that she she looked like just even physically she looked like she stepped right out of the sixties farm. Yeah, it was a good movie. I really liked Last Night in Soho. I think a lot of people went to go see that movie. Um, maybe it was more popular in England, you know? I imagine it's one of those sort of movies where yeah. it's just... Maybe American audiences just weren't hip to it, but god damn, what a great movie. But a beautiful I found it film. really interesting how her look progresses throughout the movie... As the focus of the movie changes. 
Yeah. I mean, by the end of the movie, she was any other pretty white girl. Yeah. That you can find right now. Some serious mean girl shit happening in that, too. Yeah. Some some serious mean girl shit. Yeah. But what is have great... seen Matt Smith play a bastard. Yeah. I mean, it's the kind of role that he needs. Yeah. You know, he hasn't been as successful after Doctor Who as David Tennant has been. And this is kind of... This, this is a good breaker for him. Yeah. But what a but what a beautiful film. I think it's in my top ten right now for the year. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a beautiful film. It's one of those films where, yeah, I don't think that, like, unlike Scott Pilgrim and Baby Driver, this isn't one that you can watch over and over again. But it is one you should watch twice because once you understand the entire plot, that's one where, okay, now I need to go back a second time and yeah. watch it and catch on all the things that I now know. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But, but nice, oh, nice. I, I, it's getting a lot of vitriol, it seems, from people. I, I've yeah. seen some hate on the movie, but, yeah, I'm going to disagree. I'm, I, I think Edgar did another good job, and this is an interesting movie. It's just, I, oh, if anything, I, I think it's just that we just have not seen a movie that looks and feels like this in a really long time. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. You know, so, I mean, I've been thinking a lot about that lately because I've been watching John Carpenter interviews. And yeah. in every interview, he says that how horrible the thing did in the box office. Yeah, that's a good point. And I kind of think it's because the thing was so unique in what it did and so far out there with what it did with the creations of Rob Bottin. Yeah. That if you went to see this in the movie, you can't concentrate on the plot. Because okay, you're too yeah. busy looking at all of this shit that you've never seen before and really can't quite comprehend. Yeah. And for this logical leap, I am totally going to compare the thing to Speed Racer. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. That makes Speed sense. Speed Racer was the exact same thing. The, the aggressive use of CGI that that movie had. I feel that the last couple of years, people have really started to warm up to street to Speed Racer. Yeah, you know, I've been seeing more and more people finally appreciating it and and the look and the aesthetic of that movie. But you you have right, it, but it takes more time to like actually digest the aesthetic that the movie is going after. The same thing with the thing. Yeah. And I think last night in Soho, to a lesser extent, I think yeah. it's getting that same kind of backlash. Yeah, I Yeah, it definitely wasn't a smash hit at the box office, but but goddamn, what an amazing film. Yeah, but but seriously, ask Americans to think in anything other than a linear fashion. Yeah. And they just get upset. <laughs> yeah. Fucking tenant. <laughs> that wasn't a massive smash hit of the box office. That movie still pisses me off. It was supposed to kill COVID, and it didn't. No. No, it didn't. Yeah. It didn't. But that is about all I got. Yeah. I can't wait to talk about this week's movie. Are you sure I'm not metaphysical? It's just, you keep saying over and over again, when will Helen Hunt and Polly Shore finally do a movie? Yes. So, boom, this Can't week's we movie, finally. 
the collab we have all been waiting for. Yes. So I'm... let us get on to it. Uh, I don't know. I there was a part when I was watching the parade. And it must have been when the L tryptophan started kicking in. Okay? Yeah. Because I saw one of the people on the float, and they looked like they were looking directly at me. And it became very urgent for them to find out what my feelings are in regards to self-adhesive tape. Yeah. And I just looked back at the television screen, stared that wannabe Muppet right in the eye, and I said, self-adhesive tape? Yes, please. Perfect outro. And cut on that. And to cut.